because his beard looks ugly. Oh, nobody will mind if his beard. Even the dog wakes up with morning hair. <laughs> Good morning. Bedhead. Bed beard. He has bed beard. All right. We're going to begin with uh, seven verses of a prayer. O come, O come, Emmanuel. It is not Advent yet. This is an Advent hymn. Uh, no, we don't have our Christmas tree up, our decorations. But we have to do this for today's reading. <clears throat> hymn number 357. If you want to interpret that look that she had, it's the when, when will he stop talking look. You already know that look. Come, O oh, come, Emmanuel, and ransom captive Israel that mourns in lonely exile here until the Son of God appear. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel, shall come to All things mightily to us a path of knowledge show, then teach us in her ways to go. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to thee, O Israel. Cloud and majesty and awe. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to thee, O Israel. O come, thou branch of Jesse's tree, free them from Satan's tyranny. Trust thy mighty power to save, and give them victory o'er the grave. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel, shall come to thee, O Israel. O come, thou key of day. Our heavenly home makes safe the way that leads on high and close the path to misery. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to thee, O Israel. O come. Spring from on high and cheer us by thy drawing nigh. Disperse the gloomy clouds of night and death's dark shadows put to flight. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to thee, O Come thou desire of nations find in one the hearts of all mankind. Bid thou our sad division cease and be thyself our king of peace. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to
we read in Isaiah chapter 10, beginning at verse 10. I'm sorry, it was chapter 7, beginning at verse 10. Again, the Lord spoke to Ahaz. Ask a sign of the Lord your God. Let it be deep as Sheol or high as heaven. But Ahaz said, I will not ask, and I will not put the Lord to the test. And he said, Hear then, O house of David, is it too little for you to weary men that you weary my God also? Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. He shall eat curds and honey when he knows how to refuse the evil and choose the good. For before the boy knows how to refuse the evil and choose the good, the land whose two kings you dread will be deserted. The Lord will bring upon you and upon your people and upon your father's house such days as have not come since the day that Ephraim departed from Judah, the king of Assyria. In that day, the Lord will whistle for the fly that is at the end of the streams of Egypt and for the bee that is in the land of Assyria. And they will all come and settle in the steep ravines and in the clefts of the rocks and on all the thorn bushes and on all the pastures. In that day, the Lord will shave with a razor that is hired beyond the river with the king of Assyria, the head and the hair of the feet, and it will sweep away the beard also. In that day, a man will keep alive a young cow and two sheep, and because of the abundance of milk that they give, he will eat curds, for everyone who is left in the land will eat curds and honey. In that day, every place where there used to be a thousand vines worth a thousand shekels of silver will become briars and thorns. With bow and arrows, a man will come there, for all the land will be briars and thorns. And as for all the hills that used to be hoed with a hoe, you will not come there for fear of briars and thorns. But they will become a place where cattle are let loose and where sheep tread. <clears throat> Ay, ay, ay. Nobody wants to believe this. Ahaz doesn't want to believe it. And modern scholars, so-called, today, uh, there's been all kinds of wrangling and fighting over over the word that's translated virgin in the ESV, um, which I think in the NIV is translated young woman. Um, uh, it's maybe been used for both uh, uh, different times in in Hebrew, but uh, and I don't I don't see what the big deal is that in prophecy there's very often I would say almost always some sort of a double entendre in the Old Testament, kind of a near term fulfillment, but the ultimate fulfillment is something way way bigger, and we see what is meant here. When you turn to Matthew and and he tells God tells Joseph, uh, you're gonna you're gonna call this child Emmanuel. They're commanded to name him Jesus, but he'll be Emmanuel. And oh, that's a whole different thing then. Clearly it means virgin. But in the but in the near term, there is uh, a fulfillment also for Ahaz in the next few years. Um, Ahaz doesn't believe that God will come to his rescue. Oh, you said 65 years, for pity's sake, I can't wait that long. And like, will God really take care of us? And uh, look at how, how great God is. When he talks about the, these, uh, these terrible, powerful enemies, he says, I'm going to whistle for the fly that's at the end of the streams of Egypt. The, the nation of Egypt is like a fly. God is going to whistle for, and it'll come and... And irritate uh, the enemies of Israel. And for the bee that's in the land of Assyria, the mighty king uh, uh, Tiglath-Pileser is, is just a bee. And God will whistle for him and he will come and do what God wants. And, and then they will uh, 
uh, cause um, Israel's enemies to be desolate. And where they had uh, vineyards and crops, those will become places of briars and thorns. And so there is so this near-term fulfillment within a lifetime, within some years uh, there. But there's more than that going on. Uh, to call the child that a virgin will conceive and bear a son and call his name Emmanuel. And that while he is yet small, God will bring justice. God will bring uh, his his rescue. In the next chapter, tomorrow you can practice saying Maher Shalo Hajbaz. Uh, there is a, a near term fulfillment, but the child isn't named Emmanuel. Isaiah's wife bears a son, and and he's connected with this prophecy, but but they don't call him Emmanuel. We get to call him Emmanuel because the ultimate fulfillment of that prophecy happens. For us, and in the one who who is God with us, Emmanuel, God with us. What a striking thing! If you were if you were paying attention as we sang the hymn, each verse calls upon God to be with us. O come, O come, Emmanuel. Uh, it calls upon God to be with us in in various ways. That each each verse has a different aspect of, uh, perhaps one verse out of those seven would be more meaningful to you than another one today. Uh, different aspects of God's rescue. That he, that he would be our wisdom. Uh, Emmanuel, that he ransoms us from captivity. You know, verse two, that he would be our wisdom and when we are, can't find the path, that he, he is the path for us. That he would be the Lord of might. And, uh, and the, the lawgiver, that he would come and bring justice in situations where we find injustice. That he is the branch of Jesse's tree freeing us from Satan. That, that, that he restores what seemed dead, what seemed past. That he is the key of David to open wide our heavenly home. Uh, that when we feel shut in and and trapped that he is the key to our release um that he is the day spring from on high to cheer us by his drawing nigh out today it's rainy and gloomy maybe for some of you it's dark too maybe for some of you you need the sunlight the sunrise in jesus and finally the desire of nations Binding in one the hearts of all mankind and at a time when we feel so divided and maybe your family or in, or in a friendship or in a marriage, you're divided. We pray in that hymn for the desire of nations to come and bind our hearts in one, to bring us, to bid our sad divisions cease. All those things and more are wrapped up in, in our hope for Emmanuel the promise that Isaiah gave, and which God fulfilled in Jesus. And somehow, and I don't remember the details now, but there is an acronym in those seven verses, which produces a, a Latin phrase, arrow, cross, tomorrow I will be there. Let's pray. Oh Lord Jesus, thank you so much for promises Promises long ago in Isaiah, promises still today in our hymns, uh, in this hymn. Uh, we thank you, Lord, for those who, uh, who labored over it to, to express for us in words that, that we struggle to find. Our prayer to you, come. Come, Lord Jesus, we often pray. We mean that. Come and be God with us. And rescue us. Amen. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. And if I stop scratching his head, he shoves his head into my hand right away. It's like, He's so very needy. Let's pay attention to me. <laughs>